You know, I was playing Aim Lab earlier and I couldn't help thinking about the fact that even though I'm putting out all this effort into getting better, I'll probably never be perfect. Why? Well, if you have time, let's talk about it. It takes dedication to sit down and practice for hours on end trying to pinpoint all your weaknesses and then after you do that, you have to train yourself to remove bad habits and all that shit and god it sounds so simple but it's a pain in the ass sometimes. Take it from me, I used to spend all my time sitting down learning combos, matchups and other boring nerd shit in many types of fighting games. Despite this. I struggled day and night to keep up with my friends and got pretty demotivated when I couldn't seem to find the source of my problem. Is the character I'm playing bad? Is my controller fucked up? Why can't I seem to get better no matter how hard I try? Then I realized that not once, not once have I actually sat down and practiced for a change. I mean if you really think about it, only a few pro players were actually naturally gifted enough to be able to be good at right off the bat. The majority really saw their success from hours and hours of hard work through practice and trial and error. But as naturally gifted as you can be, you can never be perfect. And that's not really your fault, just kind of a human limitation. Think about that for a second. You can't be perfect because you are made not to be. It's why we use technology to aid us in our endeavors, because some things we can physically never do like instantly one-tapping someone the exact millisecond you see them or react the exact frame a move comes out. Enough talk about what's physically impossible. What are things that we can do to at least get better at certain skills? Well beat me to it will ya? I was just about to explain that. Let's look at a pretty good example of a way of sharpening your skills through practice and hard work. A free game on Steam that specifically helps your aim in first person shooters with tasks dedicated to helping you get better and with exceptionally in-depth analytics at that, this is AimLab. Get it? Because it helps you get better at your aim. As I said earlier, AimLab is an early access game specifically made to help those in need of practice in their aim in FPS games. While it sounds simple, this game is pretty robust and has very diverse tasks that are specifically made to get you to widen your eyes to the fact that you are garbage. No, I'm, I'm serious. Admit it, we may destroy our friends at any game or hit the craziest one dig you could conceive, but at the end of the day, we all start off with zero skill, and it doesn't take a brainiac to put that into perspective for the common silver one. But I'm sticking to what I said earlier, we are never going to be perfect, but that should also be a reason why you seek to get better. The reason most players train their hearts out is not just because they want to get better, but also the pursuit of being the best. This is a competition after all, but don't let that get to you. Right now, we're in what I like to call the lab, which is basically where we sit down and really think about what we're not too good at. For example, you may not be too good at flicking, so you can try doing one of the tasks located in the flicking section, or maybe you got a slow hand, well then you can try one of the speed tasks. In aim lab. There's always a task for your needs, which makes it very easy to see where your problems and bad habits are. Wanna see what weaknesses and strengths you have? No problem, AIMAP has got you covered. Want analytics on which part of the screen you're inconsistent on? Yes sir, just one click. Wanna see a skill graph of your performance? Do I even have to answer that? It's the first thing they show you after a task is over for fuck's sake. That's not all, because AIMLAB is so customizable that you're guaranteed to be able to transfer your sensitivity, crosshair, etc from other games which allows for easier adjustments and on top of that you can customize the task to your liking with AI training which adapts to your gameplay and habits allowing for more worthwhile practice. So now that I laid everything out for you it's as easy as picking it up and play right? Well if the answer was that easy I wouldn't be making this video would I? Although AimLab is as diverse as the different planets in the entire universe, the amount of effort it takes to consistently play AimLab can be demotivating to many, especially people who have seen success the immediate moment they play a new game. It's another reason why perfection is far away from human capabilities. 
Our feelings and emotions get in the way, causing hesitation and even stress. Maybe I'll never be good. How am I so bad? Maybe I should just give up at this point. These are things we tell ourselves when it feels like everything coming up to this point had been all for nothing. And in terms of relatability, it's off the charts. We all want to admit defeat at some point, but the reality is that we just have to keep pushing forward because nothing comes easy. You may notice that your results don't reflect how good you think you are, and even though that's fine, it could still rub you the wrong way. It may even be embarrassing knowing the real level of skill you have, which even though I'm making this seem bad, in reality this is all just a part of the process. You gotta fail in order to know what it feels like to succeed. As I said earlier, humans are limited to their own functionality, and because of this, we have to face every challenge with this limitation. But the best we can do as people is practice and adapt. Being consistent is better than not being good at all, and it should stay that way. So now that I've explained all this, what's the final verdict? Despite what I said, I'm not some secret pro player waiting to be discovered. I'm just like you, a person who plays video games in their spare time. Although maybe I have too much spare time. It isn't mandatory to be the greatest and nor should it be okay to be the worst, because in my opinion, you should at least feel satisfied with a certain skill level and let yourself rest every once in a while, because as I said, we aren't perfect. Wait, is that it? Is what it? The video, is it already over? I mean, what else do you want me to talk about? I think I went into pretty good detail about how aim lab is an incredible way to practice. What about how training was back in the day? You know, like uh, how the old school players did it. Huh? Oh, I see. Ugh, fine. But don't come crying to me when this video comes out and it's a year long. Oh, and by the way, I'll be using my game of choice for this section. You already know shit is about to go down. If you thought practicing was tedious and hard up until this point, then this might be a little overwhelming, but trust me, once you get into it, it's very simple. Alright? Good. Now let me tell you a little story about how difficult it was to consistently practice and get good at fighting games back in the arcade days. Fighting games were a huge niche, and only barely left the arcades with releases on home consoles, and even then, it didn't help that the only way to get better back then was to just get washed over and over and over again, and only a select amount of fighting games that were on home consoles had practice modes, and even fewer had a variety of options to help you get better. Now, let's take a look at present day, where fighting games have basically transcended reality and are now in the hands of many. Whether old or new, you had to have played a fighting game once, and if you put enough time into it, you would have hit training mode eventually. So what options are there now that games have advanced in such a way that allows more creativity? Well, let's use Dragon Ball Fighters training mode as an example. After doing the normal procedure for playing a match in Dragon Ball Fighters, you're immediately dropped straight into the match with nothing to do, with no immediate idea where to start, and on top of that, you're left all by yourself to find out everything. Is what I would say, if we didn't have these bad boys. There's a lot of configuration in this mode that allows you to practice different situations, and on top of that, you can fiddle with character specific settings, or even have the opponent block in a certain way. It's really easy to use, and it basically shows how much training in fighting games has really come a long way since the early days of arcade fighting games. But wait, hold on. Why is this training mode so good when you literally went on a tangent on how good Aim Lab was? Compared to Aim Lab, this is barely touching the surface on good practice, right? Well, that's where you're wrong, Shatterbox. A good training mode isn't really about the qualities and features it gives you. Well, I, I mean, yes and no, but what makes a good training mode is how it allows you to consistently interact with the game's mechanics and help you learn efficiently. Aim Lab may have the task and customizability but fighting games don't really need that. Sure, some games have mission modes and ways of introducing players to new and or existing mechanics, but that's usually what they're used for. Experienced players would know that you can practice your reaction time by recording a sequence of inputs and then replaying them on the random setting, on top of being able to change the frequency of each sequence of events. Okay, cool. So I have all these ways of improving my skill, so now it should be as simple as going online, 
finding match and destroying my opponent, right? Well... Not exactly. See, this is where my speech at the beginning of the video gets its meaning from. It's not so easy to practice because immediate results aren't supposed to be expected. The reason you're training is to better realize your weaknesses and fix them, a common misconception by most players. Doing something in practice mode doesn't immediately make you Goichi, nor does hitting all your shots on spider shot and aim lab make you the next simple. It's all about being dedicated to seeing your performance increase. The more you practice, the more you can familiarize yourself with the bad habits you have and the mistakes you make and adapt to that knowledge. You are your worst enemy when it comes to becoming a better player because your problems don't just magically happen because of some falling angel. It's because you're human and aren't going to have superpowers that allow you to have inhuman reactions because that's just how life is. At the end of the day, nothing is ever going to be easy right from the get-go. They say practice makes perfect, but it's more of an old lie than anything. In my opinion, it should be practice makes the mighty. This whole video has just been me rambling on about how humans are limited and don't worry about being perfect. So I'll save you the trouble since I already feel like I got my point across that way because what I definitely don't want me being labeled as is a perfectionist. Do you know what a perfectionist is? Let me find a definition of one for you. According to Google, a perfectionist is a person who refuses to accept any standard short of perfection. You wanna know why these people are so annoying? Because you can never please these motherfuckers. They always rant on and on about how it isn't the exact way they want, it's not good enough, and half the time, they can't even do it the standard of perfection either. But despite these guys being as annoying as hell, they at least do something right, which is always striving for more. You can be satisfied with your skill, but without the urge to strive for more, you'll just be left behind while everyone else advances forward. It's happened to me already, and while I'm still practicing and trying to get better to this day, it's gonna take a while before I reach the skill I'm trying to reach. Although perfection is a dream far from human capability, practice is the next best thing in my opinion. It's kinda soothing in a sense to know that I can look at my stats and even though it can be the slightest increase in performance, I'd still be pretty proud of myself because I practice to see myself grow. And that's sick. Dude, just fucking end the video already. I fucking warned you!